Yo, 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 what's going on guys? It's Dude here and today we're back with a brand new video. Today I'm going to be talking about the top 10 mistakes that I see people make when tuning in Gran Turismo 7. Now this is something that I've noticed over a multitude of different games in and outside the Gran Turismo series. I do think it's extremely helpful in identifying mistakes and becoming a better tuner on Gran Turismo 7. Now in a later video, I'm going to get to the technical side and explaining what all of these setup adjustments do, but this is kind of just more of an approach and a way to help you psychologically when building your tunes. But yeah, without further ado, let's get into the list. Number 10, be patient. Now, trial and error is your best friend. As with a lot of things in life, all good things do take time and tuning is no different. The extra three or four hours that you're going to spend for the next two or three weeks is going to save you tens and even hundreds of hours depending on how much you play in the years to come once you learn how to tune and once you figure out what everything does within the tuning of Gran Turismo 7 you will never have to learn it again and granted you will learn little tiny things about different cars and different tires along the way but once you for the most part figured it out you, you don't have to reteach yourself until a new Gran Turismo game comes out which usually takes multiple years so again short-term pain long-term gain I know it's not always fun sitting in time trial by yourself but doing this and making a bunch of adjustments and putting in the time and being as patient as you can probably should be higher on this list but I have it at number 10. Number 9. Taking a scientific or real life approach doesn't always work. Now with Gran Turismo 7 we're privileged in the sense that I believe that the settings within the suspension especially are more realistic than they've ever been in any other Gran Turismo game and I could say that confidently as I've done tuning in pretty much every single Gran Turismo game since GT3. With that being said, there are certain elements in certain cases where you really have to throw out the book on what you know, especially if you have a real life background in engineering, especially automotive engineering, because in some cases it can actually hinder you in the sense that you may think you know what's going on, you may think you know what the right adjustment is, but it's not always going to be the correct adjustment in game. And that just goes for any game, really. And this goes back to the aforementioned trial and error. I really do think that is the best approach to take when tuning. I'm not saying that having some sort of automotive background doesn't help, but sometimes it could actually be a hindrance as I mentioned. I see a lot of people message me and tell me over the years that if I went to another racing game or another sim that I wouldn't know how to tune. It's just I only know how to do it in Gran Turismo 7. And honestly, I think my style of learning would actually bode well because again, as realistic as some of these modern simulations are, a lot of the time they are not completely accurate to real life and have quirks that you need to learn through trial trial and error and effort. So yeah, throw out the book on real life because I find on these games it doesn't always make sense. Number eight. Now this one again could have been a little bit higher, but know how to diagnose your car's behavior on track especially the bad behaviors. It's essential to learning what all of the numbers within the tuning do. So great, your car is having issues with oversteer or you're wanting to spin out. Now where is the car oversteering? Is it oversteering under heavy braking? Is it oversteering when you lift off the gas at high speed? Is it oversteering when you apply the throttle out of a low speed corner? Is it oversteering when you apply the throttle in third gear out of a mid speed corner? Knowing how to diagnose your car's behavior is really, really important when trying to make adjustments to the car. Now my guide later on part two and three of this series is going to help you learn what everything in the tuning section does. But if you don't know how to diagnose the car's behavior in the first place, how are you going to know which numbers to change? That's number eight. Number seven, tuning for PP racing is way different than BOP maxed out and horsepower and weight limited races. And that's just for now. The reason I say for now is because if you're watching this in the future, they may have fixed the broken PP or performance point system. But as things stand, if you're doing these offline races that are PP limited or open lobbies that are PP limited, running a setup that's optimized for PP racing is super, super important rather than running a setup that is for BOP maxed out and horsepower and weight limited races. Now, what I mean by that, when you have BOP maxed out or horsepower and weight limited races, 
is you want to set up the car to be the best possible car that it can be the fastest through the corners the best down the straights really really good gearing but for pp racing you want to manipulate the performance points value on your car so you can add more horsepower but again those cars do not drive well necessarily but their performance points value is so low that you're just going to be crushing people because you just have way more power than them and way more potential around a lap than they do and this is not how you would want to set the car up given different restrictions like again the bop fully upgraded or horsepower and weight limited races but yeah just be aware of that there are two different types of tuning philosophies that you want to go with one of them is to make the car as good as possible the other one is to make the car really bad so that you could add more horsepower and this is more prevalent in the lower pps from 400 to 600 you really want to mess up your tune just so you can get more power added to the car but then you know the faster the cars get the more that a typical setup starts to make sense in the 800 pp range but again remember pp racing tuning different than the other forms of tuning within the game number six know when to stick with typical theory and when to branch off develop base tunes now this one is pretty important if you've already kind of have your feet dipped into tuning and you have a general idea or maybe you have a few really good tunes on a few different cars but then struggle to make setups for other cars i think this is good advice that i'm about to give to you guys i think the one thing that i like to do the most is develop base tunes now a common car that i tune on this game and you'll see in my videos is gt3 cars now the front engine gt3 three cars a lot of them drive really really similarly they do have their quirks and their unique features and stuff but for instance if i'm making a dodge viper gt3 tune and i already have a corvette gt3 tune what i'll do is i'll just put the corvette setup on the viper and then slowly tweak the viper to account for the smaller differences in driving but it saves me so much time to start with a base tune based on another car than start from stock and try to work from there you don't need to reinvent the wheel if you've already done a good job on another car now on the other side of that don't want to rain overly rigid on your tuning philosophy because sometimes when you introduce sports tires as opposed to racing tires or you have a mid-engine car where you need to compromise certain parts of the setup in order to make sure that the car is balanced you need to know when to do that so like if you put the corvette tune on the ferrari 458 italia for instance which i just made a tune for you you're just going to spin out after two corners and assume that the car sucked but if you know what to change that's super super important and you you have to know when to stick with your typical theory and when to branch off and try new things. Number five, if you are new to tuning especially, make one adjustment at a time and learn what that adjustment does. Raise your hand if you had a really, really close to perfect setup, made a few adjustments, made the car way worse, and then completely forgot what your previous setting was and now you're stuck with a car that was worse than what you had five minutes ago. I have done that multiple different times, especially earlier in my tuning days. Now, as you become more confident you could start making multiple changes at the same time but even me I really only change two things at once and then go back on track to test it because I want to know the effectiveness of the changes that I made if I make two changes to two different things on the suspension I don't know how big of a difference one of those changes is making and I don't know how much of a difference the other of the two changes is making I'm just kind of hoping that the car is good especially if you're trying to learn every element within the suspension drivetrain or downforce tuning you should make one adjustment at a time and try to figure out what that does whether it's good or bad now number four now just because i told you to make one adjustment at a time do not be afraid to take massive swings at that one particular adjustment i see a lot of people say on youtube and on forums they say if you're making adjustments to the car make small changes in small increments to achieve the best results now if you're really really close on a setup that does make sense also if you're in real life where consequences are a real thing and you don't want to crash the car that also also makes a lot of sense but in a video game especially while you're learning don't be afraid to throw the natural frequency in the complete opposite direction all the way i do this all the time even if i'm 90 percent sure that i'm gonna go back to the pits after two corners because i don't like it that validation you get and understanding of what could work and what could not work is a good way of learning tuning and figuring out what that particular card needs another thing i like to do now if i have a certain setting and i think that setting is too oversteering what i'll do is i'll make a massive massive of 
adjustment to something to make the car way more understeery. And if the car feels better after the adjustment, then I know that the happy medium is probably closer to the adjustment. Now, if the car feels way, way worse than it felt originally, then I know that the number will be closer to what I started with versus what I made before the adjustment. I hope that makes sense, but I don't want you guys to be afraid to make these big changes and then go back to it after because you're just learning more and more about the way the physics engine in the game work. Number three, understand that maximizing and minimizing most of the settings on your tune can be optimal a large percent of the time. I get a lot of people commenting on my tune saying, well, this is just very similar to the last one. This is very the same. You know, all you did was throw this and max that on that one and then minimize this on this setting. And it's the same as the last tune. And a lot of the time I'm doing this not because I'm lazy or because I'm trying to crank out videos. I'm doing it because it is the best possible option for that car. I see a lot of people with these very intricate tunes but end up being too slow and a lot slower than what I would be using because they don't understand or they're afraid to max something out all the way because it doesn't feel as individualized it doesn't feel as special of a tune because it's not as difficult to make now this may not apply to everybody but I do find in Gran Turismo's newer games the range in what the minimum is and the maximum is is not very big so if I could put the natural frequency higher and I could put it in the middle I would but because the range and what the minimum and the maximum is so low a lot of the time the best option just ends up being the minimum or the maximum and that's just the truth honestly now some cars are obviously more egregious than others in this department but overall this is a very niche but a very important thing to learn about tuning don't think you're crazy for having a lot of the settings maxed out or minimized on your cars number two Find a solution to your car's problems with the least amount of compromise on other parts of the track. So remember when I said earlier that you need to know how to diagnose your car's behavior on track? These two kind of go hand in hand, but this is really important because I see a lot of more advanced tuners see an issue with their car. So let's say a car has an extreme amount of understeer in low speed corners and a little bit of understeer at high speed corners. Now, naturally, there's a lot of things that you can do to try to fix this, right? But a lot of people will go to things like like removing rear downforce or adding a bunch of rear ride height, which in Gran Turismo Sport did make sense. Now in this game, when you add a bunch of rear ride height, for instance, now this is of course just an example, you really lose a lot of straight line speed. So a lot of the cornering speed that you can gain on that understeery car by raising the rear ride height, you're going to lose down the straight. Now on road cars, for instance, there are some road cars that you wanna run some rear ride height on because the braking zones are so long and you're going to be going so fast on the straights anyways that the handling benefit it is worth it on a lot of other cars it may not be worth it so realize that when you make a change to try to fix a certain behavior on your car you may be sacrificing something else if that sacrifice you're making offsets the gain that you made in the other area then it's not worth it you know what i mean sometimes the fastest possible setup on a car does not always feel the best to drive and that's just something that you're going to have to accept and that leads us right into the final mistake number one just because a car feels good does not mean it's fast. You're gonna wanna tune cars for maximum grip first and then balance second. Now, of course, this comes down to the way you like to play the game. If you wanna just cruise around and drive at eight tenths and have a good time, this may not be the best advice for you. But for me personally, I always take lap time over comfort. So the first thing that I will try to do is get the most possible front end grip out of a car that I possibly can to make it as fast as possible around a lap and have that potential. Now, if I can't control the car and I can't drive the car consistently, then you start to dial in the balance. But if you start with dialing in the balance, you may stop your setup. You'll be like, oh wow, this feels great. This is perfect. You know, so I'm going to go into a lobby and, you know, do really well. And you don't always do really well because there's going to be people who have more lateral grip around the corners than you, maybe some more straight line than you have. And that's because that you're tuning the car for balance and feeling as opposed to the maximum amount of grip that the car can produce. You definitely don't want to leave tenths of a second on the table when you're racing other drivers, especially some of the fast drivers on Gran Turismo 7. So again, tune cars for maximum grip first and then balance them second. So I really hope this video has informed you guys on some of the main problems and common mistakes that people make while tuning. This is going to be part one, of course, of my massive tuning guide. In part two and three, I'm definitely going to get into the nitty gritty of what everything in the tuning sheet does. Every little nuanced thing about road cars, race cars, sports tires, etc. I'm really going to go in depth on that. So these videos are going to be a little 
little bit longer, but I really do hope you guys enjoy them. Of course, if you did enjoy the video, be sure to click that subscribe button as it helps get my video out into the algorithm. I really do want to help the Gran Turismo community get better at tuning, guys. So yeah, click that subscribe button, like and comment if you enjoyed, and have a fantastic night. I'm out. Peace.